So how can you be wealthy and live like a Stoic? So Stoicism is a ancient philosophy, it's 2300 years old, and the idea is to live a simple life, a virtuous life, and focus on what you control and ignore everything else. That's the main premise of Stoicism. And then in today's capitalistic society, everyone wants to be wealthy, so how can you combine those two things? In my opinion, and also according to the Stoics, it's actually possible to live a wealthy life whilst remaining Stoic. And in this video, I'll show you how you can use Stoicism to become a better investor. So my name is Darius Faru. I am the author of The Stoic Path to Wealth. Uh, I've been studying the philosophy of Stoicism for about 10 years now. Uh, I've written extensively about it on my blog and in my books. This is my eighth book. And I'm also a long-term investor in the stock market. I've been investing for 17 years. Um, and over the last five years, I've combined investing strategies together with Stoicism. And this is the first book that combines Stoicism and investing in wealth. So I want to give you three techniques that you can apply to become a better investor. And this works whether you are a beginner or an advanced investor. But before we start, I want to read a quote to you from Epictetus, who was one of the most stringent Stoic philosophers because he was the only Stoic philosopher who was not born wealthy. He was born a slave. Somehow he was set free by his master, who apparently was a, a good person. And when Epictetus was set free, he finally somehow found a philosophy school and started studying philosophy. And he said the following, if you can make money remaining honest, trustworthy, and dignified, by all means do it. But you don't have to make money if you have to compromise your integrity. So I think this is really the foundation of the pursuit of wealth. If you always keep in mind that you really don't have to do certain things, just to make money. Pursue wealth and money with dignity and with a um, with virtue in mind, because it certainly is possible to make money in an honest way in today's world. While it doesn't look like that, because if you go on social media, everyone is trying to teach you and uh, show you get rich quick schemes. In my opinion, those are not honest ways of making a living. Um, I think it's, you know, you really don't have to get rich quick. You don't have to make a lot of money to become wealthy. And that is one of the, the biggest messages uh, that I'm sharing that, I, that I've learned and that I've also applied in my own life because, you know, my family, we started from zero. We always lived paycheck to paycheck, and my only desire was to become so wealthy that I never had to worry about money again. And when I accomplished that a few years ago, I realized, look, I didn't ever make a million bucks in a year or something, right? Um, it was a gradual rise and a gradual increase of my earnings, but never to like exponential increases, right? I, I always made sure that I lived below my means and invested consistently, and I'm going to share with you these lessons, okay? So three stoic techniques that will make you a better investor. Technique number one, always cap your losses. And this is really the best way to start with investing because if you protect the downside or if you focus on defense first, this is also a classic technique of sports, right? One thing, like I've, I've played basketball my entire life or my entire childhood, I should say, I stopped playing for, you know, for a while, but um, defense is really the best offense because if you play defense, you cap 
the points that the other team can score against you. And all you have to do is just score normally. You don't have to outscore them by a lot. And if you look at uh, championship teams in the NBA, mo almost all of them have a top three defense. Golden State Warriors, a lot of people say, yeah, one of the best offensive teams ever. If you look at their stats in the years that they became the champion, they were often ranked number one or two in defense. This is the thing that a lot of people overlook. So where does this idea come from, from stoicism? So the best quote that I found that really captures this is from a poet called Juvenal. He was a Roman poet. He was inspired by the Stoics. He's not known as a Stoic philosopher because he was a poet, but a lot of his work was influenced by it. So he said, no one ever suddenly became depraved. Gradually and silently does the disorder pervade our minds, just as one drop after another bursts the water pot. I love this because this is what happens to most people. It's one small mistake after the other, and then you lose a little bit of money here. You lose a little bit with crypto, then with some stocks, and then with some futures, and then with another cryptocurrency or whatever, right? Or with a get-rich-quick scheme, or you spend 3000 bucks on a course, or um, whatever, right? It doesn't matter. But you make all of these small mistakes, and then you find yourself not making progress or even going backwards. So no matter what type of investment you're making, whether it's in yourself or in assets, you always have to find a way to cap your losses or to, to set yourself up for success. Because so in, this, in trading assets, it's very simple. You just set a stop loss. So why do you buy a stock or an asset or, any, or gold or crypto or whatever? It's because you expect it is going up. If you are wrong, you need to accept it and cap your losses. If you're trading, don't tell yourself that you are a value investor or long-term investor because that has a completely different strategy. So if you are trying to speculate and get some short-term gains, or short-term gains, if you're trying to speculate and you want to accomplish some, if you're trying to speculate and you want to make some money, um, it's the most important thing to set a stop loss. So for example, if your stock or crypto, or whatever declines by 10%, you will automatically sell at the market price. So you can cap your losses because this is a, something that I learned from one of the most famous stock traders of all time, Jesse Livermore. He said that if you decide to buy something, it means you, you have done your research, you know, why you're buying it and you have a thesis so you buy because you expect it's going up otherwise you would short or borrow shares and sell and then buy it at a lower price if you don't know what that is no worries it's not that important because as a beginner investor just focus on the principles and the the, the classic techniques of trading stocks and buying stocks investing in stocks what the difference is etc whether you are a long-term investor or short-term investor, um, those things are more important. But if you buy, it means you expect it's going up. If it goes against you, it means you're wrong. You need to accept it. So if you ignore that, you will make one mistake after the other. So always cap your losses. It's really important because a lot of folks start out with trading stocks and in my book, The Stoic Path to Wealth, I also have a framework for that. But what I recommend everybody to do is to invest for the long term. And what that means is, is another way of looking at capping your losses. Because if you, for example, invest in yourself, right, and you pick a pursuit in life that will bring you experience or skills, you are never losing. So when I started my writing career in 2015, I actually wanted to start a business. So I had a corporate career. And before that, I had another business with my dad. And it's a long story, but 
I wanted to do something else. I wanted to start my own business. And I had this opportunity where I said, okay, I'm kind of in between things. Let me try writing and see how well that goes. And even if no one reads my stuff, at least I'm improving my writing skills and I can use that in my business. So that whole time period of me trying to figure things out was a way of capping my losses because I chose a pursuit that would bring me skills and experience, right? So that's a perfect way to look at it in your career. Um, when you invest for the long term, you always, you, you pick a strategy that has a very high probability of succeeding on the long term. So to cap your losses, you have to stay invested. This is a thing that a lot of folks don't get. Investing in the S&P 500 index, you know, 500 largest companies in the world or in, in the U.S. Um, only works when you invest in it for a long time, for at least 10 years. No one knows what's going to happen within the next one, two or three years. But we do know that in the long term, 10, 15, 20 years, there's almost a 100% probability that you will be up compared to today. Why is that? Because in the history, in the last 100 years, we've never had a 15-year period, 15 15-year period where stocks went down. That includes the Great Depression. So, you, no matter what you do in life, you always have to look at the downside and, and set yourself up to win. And even if you make mistakes and things go against you, you still get something out of it. So. That is technique number one. Technique number two is make it worth it. So I'm going to read a Marcus Aurelius quote to you. If it's not right, do not do it. If it's not true, do not say it. So if something is not right, don't do it. Right? So in other words, just do things that are worth it. <laughs> right? Because why would you even do it in the first place? Translate this to investing, and it means that you have to invest enough to make it worth it. A lot of folks in their 20s and 30s try to trade stocks or try to invest in stocks with 50 bucks or 100 bucks or 500 bucks in total, not a month, right? In total. And they have this portfolio that was a thousand bucks or whatever. And what I always say is that. Even if you get 100% gain, which is very difficult to accomplish, um, you've made a thousand bucks or 500 bucks. It's not worth it, right? Because you could spend all of that time investing in yourself and your skills <laughs> and then go out in the marketplace or start a business or start a side project or whatever and add that to your income. Right, so investing becomes really worth it when you invest bigger amounts or every single month. If you invest a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, five hundred bucks a month, that will lead up to having millions in thirty years and more. Um, but if you're playing with a few hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. If you're at that stage, it doesn't mean, oh, okay, I shouldn't invest. Sure, invest. But don't spend too much time on it. Invest in your own skills. Earn more because you do have the ability to, to double your income, right? You probably don't have the ability to 10x your income because, or at least the odds are much lower. Um, if you are earning, I don't know, let's say 50K, 60K or whatever, you can go up to 100K within a few years. A lot of folks are doing it. Um, can you go from 50 to 500 within a few years? Unlikely. It can happen. Some people do it, but the odds are against you. So it's, it's a much smarter decision to focus on your income at first, invest in yourself, then make sure that you can invest more. As soon as you get to a level 
where you can invest like 20, 30, 40, or 50,000 a year, and that's doable, because let's say you make 120,000 or 150,000 a year at some point, you invest 30% of your income, or you can invest 50% of your income, it's even better. Do that for a few years, and you can front load your investments and your wealth, uh, so you can take it easy later on. Um, it's much more worth it, right? So this is a, a thing that a lot of folks never think about. And trade professional traders always think about this. They call this position sizing. Um, the size of your position really matters because if you invest a thousand bucks and you double, you earn a thousand. But if you are a bigger investor, you invest a hundred thousand, right? And you double it. Okay, congrats, you made a hundred thousand. It's a lot of money. Um, but the the percentages are the same. So it's it, it makes sense when you make the calculations and when you think about it this way, but beforehand, a lot of folks waste their time, right? Playing with small figures. So if you keep adding to your investment, your portfolio will grow and then it will become worth it. But you have to make sure that you can increase your income as well because then you can invest more. Number three, pick a strategy that you can maintain for 30 years. And this is completely aligned with the overall message of Stoicism, which is that Stoicism is a way of life. It's, a, it's not something you just do once a day or whatever. It's not like meditation that you sit down and you meditate or journaling or whatever. Stoicism is, is a lens, is, is like putting on certain glasses and looking at every single thing in life through the lens of Stoicism, which is how can I focus on what I control and ignore the noise and also give up outcomes in the future, you know, focus on the present. So translating that philosophy or that, that idea to investing, it means that I need to look at myself as an investor and I need to pick a strategy that I can really maintain for actually the rest of my life, even when I retire. So a lot of folks say, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to uh, work hard for a few years and I'm going to be very, very stringent and I'm going to live a very frugal life and I'm going to retire early. And then what? <laughs> you know, um, stoicism is a way of life. Investing is a way of life. And the way that you, you know, when you start living on the stoic path, you start living below your means. You have these, all these healthy habits, financially, mentally, you have this, this way of life that makes sense. that works for you. It's virtuous, gives you a lot of pleasure, meaning, and so forth, and you keep investing, building wealth, you start spreading the wealth, etc. And you keep doing that, right? Even when you retire, because you are a stoic, you can weather financial storms, you know what the stock market is about, how it works, you have this long term approach, and you, you separate yourself, your person, your character, who you are from your money or your net worth. It's important to you, but you are not attached to it. You want to build and you want to create and you want to add more to your wealth, but it's not the most important thing. To wrap this video up, let's go back to what um, Epictetus said, but you don't have to make money if you have to compromise your integrity. So always keep striving, keep improving, keep building wealth, keep getting after money because we live in a capitalistic society and money is a way to keep score of the value that you've created in the economy. Never forget that, right? So if you use it that way, you will make sure that you remain true to yourself, to your fellow human beings, don't scam people, just the standard things right? Everybody that everybody knows because 
what type of people scam and what type of people try to make money in dishonest ways, the, the, the greedy ones, the ones that are so attached to money that they can't live without it, they have to have it. But if you are like a stoic and you're like, oh, okay, cool, you know, no matter what life is, I'm enjoying it, whether I'm rich or poor, it's cool. But if I have a choice, I'm going to provide value and I'm trying to get rich because it's a good way of life, right? And that's the key to becoming wealthy as a stoic. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. And until the next video, take care.